Hello and welcome back to Adventurous Way. Today we want to talk about some of the gear that we use when we have been felling trees here in our forest to clear some space to build our house site. I want to start by saying we are not professional foresters, we are not professional loggers, we are just homeowners who are learning as we go, trying to do things the right way and most importantly trying to do things safely as we clear these trees. So far this year we've cleared about 200 trees and so we've learned along the way what's working for us and what's not. So we wanted to share some tips, some advice, and some things that we've picked up along the way that we think might help you if you're in a similar position to us. I wanna walk you through some of the things that I wear when I'm out here in the forest felling trees. The pattern we've developed is that I tend to be the, ones, uh, the one using the chainsaw, felling the trees, limbing them, bucking them, while Diana operates the chipper. So I'm the one who tends to be in all of the chainsawing gear. So let's go through what I wear uh, when I'm in the forest felling trees. Starting at the top, uh, this helmet. This is a Husqvarna uh, forest helmet and it has the integrated visor and uh, the, the ear protectors, the hearing protectors on the side as well. It's really important to wear a hard hat when you're in the forest. Uh, falling obstacles near trees are one of the biggest dangers in a forest, particularly when you're felling, things can become loose and dislodged and, and knocked off and having a helmet on is pretty useful. Likewise, the visor on the front we found really useful. You can see mine's taken a few knocks not necessarily from anything major hitting me, but just when you've got that visor there, it's really nice to know that you're not gonna get poked in the eye with a stick or a small limb sticking off a tree, as well as if anything should fall when you look it up, it offers you a little bit of protection as well. I will say as well, it also seems to help keep the mosquitoes away. Once that's down, there's far less opportunity for the mosquitoes to get in. And obviously when you're using the chainsaw, it does a pretty good job of keeping the wood chips and things out. You could also choose to wear some safety glasses underneath. That's what Diana does. I haven't found that necessary, but in the more open areas where it's sunny, I have certainly worn sunglasses underneath and that works fine as well. The hearing protectors are, are super useful. The chainsaw is really loud. So you do wanna make sure you've got uh, the hearing protectors on whenever that chainsaw is spinning up. You may have seen in some of the videos, I often don't have these down, particularly when it's really warm outside. It is in the 60s right now, it's only mid morning, but I am already pretty warm in here. And that's one of the reasons that we're trying to get the stuff done quickly because it's only getting hotter. The reason I don't always have the ear protectors down is because I'm also wearing these uh, ear earphones as well. These are cordless Bluetooth earphones uh, that like most can just play music through them. However, there are some really important differences with these. First is they are really good at blocking uh, external sound. So in using them with loud appliances like a chainsaw or a sawmill, they do a pretty good job of blocking the sound. I would say they're as good as the, the hearing protectors that I've got on my helmet here. But one of the features that's really cool is they can also play the background sound into the earphones as well. So you have two volume controls. One of them is for the music or whatever you wanna play, a podcast or something from your phone. The other is actually for the ambient external sound. What this means is that if you're in the forest and you want to listen to the external sounds, you can turn that up and then you can hear everything going on around you really clearly, or you can turn it way down and then they just act like regular earphones that kind of block the external sound by being stuffed into your ear canal. However, what I really like is that they respond quickly. So if you've got that ambient sound turned up, once it detects a very loud sound, like the chainsaw running, it actually quickly mutes that and it happens really fast. So I can have it so it's playing on the ambient sound, I can hear uh, people around me, I can hear what's going on, but as soon as I spin up that chainsaw it gets loud, it mutes all of that background sound. That lets me get away with not wearing these ear protectors, particularly when it's really warm, because I'm getting the sound protection from the earphones without having to worry about turning them on and off all the time or taking them in and out every time I fire up the saw. Next up, I'm gonna talk about my shirt. So this is a shirt that I picked up at Tractor Supply about a year ago. Honestly, it's pretty disgusting right now, but this is my outdoor work shirt and it has been incredible. It was not expensive. I can't remember exactly how much we paid. I wanna say it was around $30 or so, but it's turned out to be almost bulletproof. I can carry logs against my chest. We've taken big piles of mulch and things against this. And as far as I'm aware, there's not a single tear or thread coming loose or anything. I've been really, really impressed with this. I also like the fact that it, it buttons up really tight at the collar. This is great. We've got a load of mosquitoes around here. There's ticks and all sorts. And having that seal up stops them getting in as well as obviously things like sawdust and wood chips. Somehow this season, we've been out here working the forest now for two or three months. We haven't got a single tick on us. And I think part of that is because we have clothes like this that are tight fitting and just don't give the tick somewhere to, to get in. When we started chainsawing, I was using some chainsaw gloves, but I've since switched to these ones. I was having some trouble with the vibration from the chainsaw, making my hands really stiff the next day. And I wanted to find some slightly better padded gloves that would work. I found these on Amazon and picked them up about two or three weeks ago 
And so I've put some good use on them so far. They're not miracle workers. They're not gonna remove every vi uh, vibration from the chainsaw, but they do seem to be helping. And anecdotally, compared to the gloves I was using before, these do seem to be an improvement. They, I would say the fit is a little on the larger size, but they, and they're pretty bulky. I mean, you have to be realistic. They, they have this real uh, thick kind of rubbery protection on the outside that makes them look like Spider-Man hands, I guess. Uh, but the the result is that they are, they're gonna reduce your your dexterity. You're not gonna be able to like be as nimble with things and on the chainsaw trying to get into the, some of those screws or loosening things on the wood chipper is definitely harder with these gloves on. But in normal operation on the, the chainsaw, they've been working great. I also keep them on when I'm dragging branches and logs and things out and the, the padding on the inside seems to be really durable and is holding up really nicely to that as well. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with these. They, they're holding up to everything that I'd expect. For the price, I don't necessarily think they're gonna last forever, but so far they're working really well. Perhaps one of the most important parts of the safety gear that I wear when chainsawing is these chaps. I've been using these about a year now. You can see that they've they picked up some good wear and tear over the, over the last 12 months. I've never hit them with a chainsaw, uh, which is good. I don't wanna test them out, uh, but I do trust that they would do their job uh, if if they were asked to. And these chainsaw traps have actually been really good. They are not good just for protection from the chainsaw itself, but also just wading through brush and climbing up into brush piles. Having this extra layer of protection on the outside of your legs is really nice. It stopped me getting a load of sharp branches digging in or getting too dirty underneath. Uh, so they do a pretty good job of that as well. They do have a pocket on here. I've always never used this pocket and they have a second upside down pocket on here, which honestly, I still have no idea what it's actually for but I've never found a use for that either. They're quick to put on. If I uh, if I do damage them, if they got hit with a chainsaw or they get too badly torn up, I can replace them without having to replace an entire pair of pants. Another reason that we chose the chaps rather than a set of pants was because when we started, we only had one pair and that meant that Diana or I could wear them depending on who was using the chainsaw at the time without having to have two separate pairs of quite expensive pants. Since then, Diana has also bought herself a pair as well. So we now do have two pairs. They're exactly the same size. They adjust with buckles and, and fasteners around the outside. So they're easily adjusted to whoever's wearing them. One of the things I do like is the buckles are actually positioned for a right-handed person to easily put on and off. So you can see the buckles on the left leg are on the inside, whereas the buckles on the right side are on the outside. Same with the ones higher up as well, and the buckle around the waist is on the right side. So it means that as a right-handed person, it's really easy to get them on and off. Something to think about if you are left-handed, it is gonna be a little bit trickier to do these left-handed. When I'm felling trees, I do keep a couple of accessories in my pockets. I know you can get all sorts of belts and things for holding your scrunch and various tools to, to help you on your like, file, help you on your chainsaw. I don't carry those around because normally those are only 50 feet away from where we're actually working. What I do carry around in my pocket is some wedges. And I've got two different sets of wedges here. I have these Husqvarna wedges that I keep in my left pocket. These are, I think, eight inch wedges. And uh, these are pretty good. I, I don't mind these. I keep two of these in my pocket at all times. On the other pocket, I keep two uh, steel wedges. I actually prefer these. These are a little bit longer, but the plastic is not as shiny. And so if you can see between the two, the, uh, the Husqvarna one, this one here, is a slightly more glossy plastic than the, the steel that I, I use as well. And what that means is that if I need to drive two wedges in, one on top of the other, sort of in that sort of formation, I can't do that very easily with the Husqvarna. They tend to slip on each other. Whereas with steel wedges, I don't find that to be a problem. So if I know that I need to drive two wedges in, I just, I can't seem to do it very well with these Husqvarna ones. They tend to slide too easily. So for that, I use the steel wedges. However, these being a little bit shorter, uh, I, I use these when I, I'm trying to fell a slightly smaller tree and I don't have too much space in the in the notch to put these in. I like having these on me at all times, that way I'm not trying to find them, see where I've left them. So whenever I'm felling a tree, I start by making sure that all four wedges are in my pockets. When it comes to bucking the trees or bucking the logs down, one of the accessories that I have on me at uh, all times is this tape. Now it clips onto my belt loop with this little clip here. And this is a Spencer tape. It is designed for logging. And there's a couple of things I really like about this. The first is that it uh, it retracts really easily on its own, so I can uh, walk out, measure a tree, let, uh, pull it back, and uh, it'll retract back onto my hip. This is a, a swivel thing here, so it can swivel all the way around really freely. It doesn't get tangled up and works really well. There are a couple of things though that make this special compared to a normal tape. The first is this. <laughs> it also unrolls easily. <laughs> it also unrolls easily. 
The first is this uh, clip on the end here. And this is not something it came with, it actually came with a, a slightly different tip on the end, but you can buy this as one to swap in. This is a hook, and the reason that I like this is because you can hook it on to the end of a log like that, and then you can walk away pulling the tape with you. Once you're finished with it, you can just give a hard yank on the, the tape, and this hook folds back to a flat position and comes out of the, the location you've left it in. So the end result is that the tape can then reel back. You don't have to walk all the way back to the end of your log to go and retrieve the tape. The second thing I like about this is on one side of the tape, it has regular just inches so you can measure the, the length of a log. But on the other side of the tape, it's a little bit different. Here, you can see that the spacing of the markings is very different. And that's because these are actually in increments that show you the diameter of a log. So you can wrap this around a log, read off the number that it gives you, and it'll tell you, based on the circumference you measured, it'll tell you the diameter of the log. This is really useful if you're trying to estimate board feet. It's really quick to do. You can then see how big a log is very, very quickly without having to try and guess by holding it up at eye level or something and, uh, and see what you think it is. You can measure it and find out exactly what that diameter really is. I keep this on the side of my hip at all times. One of the accessories for felling trees that we probably should have got earlier on than we did is a good set of boots. When we first started, we were both using uh, just regular hiking boots and they weren't bad, but they, they aren't great either. So we decided to get ourselves uh, each a pair of really good forest boots. And these are the ones that I went with. These are made by Keen. They are some really sturdy forest boots. And there's a couple of features that I particularly like. The first is they have a steel toe cap. So if I were to hit my toes with the chainsaw, for example, these would offer me some good protection down there from the chainsaw. Also for just if I drop a log on my foot, as long as it hits the toe cap, it again offers me some protection. The other thing that I like is some good ankle support. I tried on lots of different pairs of boots and for me, this was the pair that felt right. These are so, so comfortable. I can work for all day in the forest. I've even just used these when I'm walking out and about in the forest going for a hike, uh, rather than my hiking boots, just because they really are that comfortable. And then the last thing I like is these eyelets that they have. You can use these either as a permanently installed lace point, so the lace won't come out. It's like a captive uh, hook, or they have a hook on the outside, which allows you to wrap the lace around. And that way it's easier when you undo the boot later, you get yourself a little bit more space to put your foot in and out. I've got these set up. There's three pairs of those eyelets. The bottom two pairs I've got set so that the lace is permanently installed there. The top one I keep on the loose setting. So that way when I take my boots off, I just take off that one extra thing and open up the, the flap here and get my foot out much more easily. These boots honestly are an absolute game changer compared to the hiking boots I was using before. And my only regret is that we didn't get these sooner. Having that protection is great, but just the comfort level is just so good. So here's what I'm wearing when I'm manning the chipper. So always in the forest, helmet with uh, earmuffs on. Because I'm mostly at the chipper chipping, I actually really like to wear safety glasses as well because that helps uh, to not get the dust in my eyes. And also the usually I have the visor down as well. Then next, um, just the top, uh, even when it's hot out, out here, now it's getting to the summer, I'm still wearing a long sleeve to not get my arms scratched up. Then next up is gloves. I got this uh, Vermont glove. Um, I actually really like it. It's been now three months or something and it's holding really well, better than my previous pair. And in winter, um, I also have a liner glove that uh, I wear um, inside this glove and then it's warm enough. Continuing down, pants. These are uh, true work pants. I like the pockets. I can put a uh, phone in one of my pockets and um, you know, other stuff in big pockets. For women, it's really hard to find pants with really big pockets. And then finally, I'm wearing boots. And uh, these are work boots and these are steel-toed boots. Um, I, these happen to be Timber Pro boots. I went to a store um, that has workwear and uh, there was some choice, much less choice than <laughs> Matt had in uh, picking his boots and also not all brands had all the sizes, so this was uh, the best fit that I could find. And it is really comfortable. I really like it. And I also got the Vermont 
uh, darn tough socks that are made in Vermont. And now even in hot weather, I'm still wearing in the boots. So yeah, that is what I'm wearing when felling trees and chipping them. Here we have the chainsaws that we use. We started off with a cordless battery powered DeWalt chainsaw, but quickly found that just wasn't powerful enough for the quantity of trees that we were trying to fell. We now use these two chainsaws. These are both made by Husqvarna. We have the Husqvarna 550 XP Mark II and the 562 XP. The 562 is a slightly larger, more powerful saw than the 550, but the 550 being lighter is often easier when we are limbing and bucking some of the trees down. I tend to use the 562 more for felling and then for actually bucking firewood logs. It just goes through them that much faster and it's a little bit easier to work with given the weight of the saw. These saws have worked out really well for us, but just the saws on their own are not enough. There's still a load more stuff we need. In terms of gas for our chainsaws, we use this gas can here. This is a one gallon gas can. And this works really well when we're trying to mix up plenty of, of uh, gas for our chainsaws. And I say mix up because you don't put straight gas into these chainsaws. You have to mix in some two stroke engine oil. We use this stuff from Husqvarna. That little bottle there is enough to treat one gallon of gas. So what we do is we pour this into our bottle of or our gas can, and then we top it up with ethanol-free gasoline. Give it a good mix in there, make sure it's all mixed, and that is what we use in the chainsaws. In terms of the, the engine oil that we use, the two-stroke engine oil we use for our chainsaws, we use this stuff from Husqvarna, and this works really well, but it is a little expensive to buy it by the small bottle like this. This treats one gallon of gas. So what we also do is we buy the slightly larger bottles as well, like this one. So this will treat five gallons, and rather than treating five gallons at once, what I've done is I've marked a little line on the side of the, the, the one gallon worth bottle, and then each time this is empty, I can top it back up to that line, which is where the bottle was originally filled to. And that way we can buy the larger bottles and save money, but still have a convenient dispenser for filling up one gallon gas cans at a time with the right amount of engine oil. Going into our magic forestry box, there are a few other accessories that work out uh, really useful as we are felling trees. The first up is we have this hatchet, this small ax here, and we, we've nicknamed this our forest hammer because very rarely do we use it for actually chopping things. It tends to be for hitting things the other way around. I use it for hitting the wedges in. I can use it as we are working with some machines. If things get stuck, it's useful to have on hand as a bit of a hammer. But the sharpened edge makes it really convenient to sort of slam it into a log and it'll just stay there when you need it. So this thing was one of the first accessories we bought and really, really like that one. So let's talk about chainsaw chains. In my box, I carry around a spare chain. This is not brand new, but I have this. This is sharp at all times. So if I quickly need a new chain, if something goes wrong, or I don't have time to properly sharpen another one in the field, I've always got this spare chain on hand. Each time that the chain needs sharpening, I'll take it down to the shipping container, or when I've got some time, I'll sharpen it. So I've always got a sharp one in this box on hand. And I have one of those for each of the chainsaws. In terms of sharpening and maintaining your chainsaw, I have this Oregon uh, chainsaw sharpening and maintenance box, which has a number of different accessories in it. It came originally also with a wedge that was up here, but there's a few things in here that are kind of my go-to accessories I use a lot. This scrunch is great. Scrunch is a screwdriver wrench, and this fits the, the different nuts and bolts on the chainsaw. Specifically, this fits the side cover, and this fits the tightening screws for adjusting the tension in the chainsaw chain. So this I use a lot. It also has uh, a guide in here that helps you get the, the right files, the right pitch on your chain. What I really like it for is actually scraping the inside of the bar, the guide in the, in the bar. These corners are calibrated to fit different widths of that guide. And so that's what I actually use to, to go down and keep that bar clean. And I do that as a regular maintenance task. It also has a bunch of files in here. You've got the handles, the guide bar, um, and the, the files here. This works really well. Uh, these are my kind of like field files I can use in the field to keep things sharp. And I do that pretty frequently. When it gets too much for that, and I do need to do a more thorough sharpening exercise, then I can take it down to the shipping container where we have a bench top chainsaw chain grinder. And that's what I'll use if I've got bigger nicks or less often on the chains, I'll do a full resharpening on that just to give them all a good edge and the same depth again. This is a, a useful little clamp down at the bottom, which allows you to hold the chainsaw up. Um, you sort of slam these points into a tree stump or something, and this screw will actually hold a chainsaw. And that's really useful when sharpening the chainsaw. One other thing that I have in here for maintenance that didn't come in the kit is this brush. 
and we just picked this up at Home Depot. I think it was like a grouting brush or just a little cleaning brush of some form. This is really useful for getting the oily, sawdusty residue out of the inside of the chainsaw. So when I open it up, I can give it a really good clean out, get rid of all that gunk and that sawdust and get it clean, ready for the next use. So I use this pretty regularly as well. Sometimes we have need to throw a rope up around a tree. And to do that, there are a couple of ways. What we find works really well is using this throw line in conjunction with this throw weight. So we tie off the throw weight to this line and then we can throw this up and over a branch or around a tree or whatever. And this weighs uh, 16 ounces, so it's fairly small, but fairly heavy. So you can get a good distance. It'll go up and over a branch. With this attached, the other end of this, we can attach to some other rope or strap, depending on what, what it is we're trying to do. Um, but these two work pretty well. There are two types of oil that you need on a chainsaw. There's the engine oil that gets mixed in with the gas, and then there's also the bar and chain oil. This is what lubricates the bar and the chain. Now, there are commercial products out there available for this. Uh, most of them are petroleum-based, and we prefer not to use those. Not only is it putting petroleum-based chemicals up on the trees, which especially if you're just limbing and you're not felling the tree, can actually harm the tree, but also that stuff is getting basically aerosolized on your bar. It's spraying up into the air around you, and you're then breathing it in. So we try not to use those. For a long time, we've been using a Steel Bio Plus, which is a vegetable oil-based uh, product. It is biodegradable and won't harm the trees and is much safer if you're going to be inhaling some of it. Downside of that is it's quite expensive. So recently we've switched to using canola oil. This is really popular in Europe. Uh, this is something they do a lot over there. And as long as you're not operating in really, really cold conditions when this can start to gel up, we've found this works really well. It's a lot cheaper than the, uh, the biodegradable chainsaw oil that you can get. And we just buy it in bulk uh, bottles at the, uh, the grocery store or the, the bulk buy store and then decant it into this smaller bottle, which is a bit easier to, uh, to lug around. But so far, I've been really impressed with this and, uh, and it seems to be working great in the chainsaws. Let's talk about some of the machines that we use when we are felling trees and clearing up here in the forest. The first and perhaps the most important of these is the tractor. This is our Kubota L3901 tractor that we bought last year. Before we bought this, we drew up a list of all the things we thought we'd use it for, and it has just blown that list out of the water. This tractor has become so invaluable for us, and particularly when we're clearing trees in the forest. There's a whole number of ways this is useful, whether it's using the forks to carry bags of uh, wood chips or logs, or using the chipper on the back. Now last year we uh, rented a, a nine inch wood chipper so it can take logs up to about nine inches diameter and that was a tow behind the truck type deal and we rented that several times last year and it was great but it was also quite expensive to rent that each time and so we decided at the start of this year that we were going to buy our own chipper but rather than buying a standalone one we decided to buy one that goes on the back of our tractor. This here is the Woodland Mills WC68 wood chipper and it fits on the three-point hitch on the back of our tractor and runs on the power takeoff, the PTO, from the tractor. It is rated, in theory, up to uh, six to eight inch pieces of wood to go through. We've never managed anything quite that big. Uh, it would be really hard to get that in under the feed roller. But things in the kind of four and five inch range, uh, we do that pretty regularly and it works great for that. We think we've now done about 150 yards of wood chips through this chipper this year and it's been great. We had the belt broke once on it and we've changed the knives or had the knives resharpened uh, a couple of times as we've gone through. But otherwise we've been really, really impressed with it. In particular, I really appreciate the hydraulic feed roller. So rather than you having to feed things through, it has a hydraulic pump on there that, that actually drives a, a, a kind of a wheel that pulls things through. Now it's not as strong as on the nine inch chip that we rented, but it does work really well. Particularly if like when, uh, like we've got the tractor now, we can be aiming slightly downhill. So the weight of the, the stuff we're feeding in uh, kind of helps it go through the chipper. Now our process has been, that we try to fell a tree and then clear it up straight away. We learned the lesson the hard way, not to get big slash piles where you fell things and just pile up all the slash and deal with it later. That's just a real pain. We don't want to get into burning that stuff. It's just easier for us to chip it. Plus we get a valuable end result. All of the wood chips that we've got out of this, we've been piling up in big piles. Some of those are composting down quite nicely. Others have gone out onto our trails where we've spread them to, to make nice walking trails. We have uh, given some to neighbors to put, particularly uh, the spruce ones around some blueberry bushes and things. So yeah, we just, we've been really happy with this chipper. So how do we collect all of these wood chips? 
Well, for that, we've been using these bulk bags or yard bags as they're sometimes known. These hold about a cubic yard. So they're about three foot by three foot by three foot roughly. And they're sort of a thick plasticky canvas type material with these grab handles in each corner. Now we started trying to use these last year with a chipper that we rented and it didn't really work very well. It was hard to aim that chipper into these bags. But now that we've got that mastered with our own chipper, which I'll get to in a second, these bags have been a great way just to move the wood chips around. We're not using these to store wood chips, but like here, we've been filling this bag just now with a pine that we felled, chipping all the branches into here, and we can then lift this bag up using the forks on the front of the tractor, take it up to the, uh, the pile, and empty it out, come down and reuse it. And we've got about a half dozen bags or so. These bags, I think they're about $20 each, and eventually they get holes in and things from the, the forks, um, piercing them at some point. But on the whole, these six bags have lasted us pretty well. We've been using these all year. So let's talk about how we are managing to fill these bags so effectively. That is thanks to this support. This is something that I built at the start of this year, really as a prototype, just to see if it would work. It's just made out of some uh, one by two lumber that we had milled on our sawmill last year. It had little bits of bark around the edges. It's real rough stuff. There's no fancy carpentry in this. And all it is is four legs that go down in the corners and holds the bag open. And as you can see, it lets us fill these bags really, really full. This one here is, is overflowing right now. Once we pick it up with the forks, it tends to settle a little bit. And so we've easily got a cubic yard of wood chips here thanks to this support that we built, that has probably now done about 150 bags that we filled using it. It's had a few repairs. It's been knocked and, and hit and things a few times, but on the whole, it's been working really well for us. When it comes to moving logs around when we're felling trees here in the forest, the ideal way to do it is to pick them up with the forks and carry them on the tractor. But that's not always possible, particularly when we were clearing the septic site, we had trees that were felled in an area where we couldn't drive our vehicle onto. It would compact the soil underneath. So instead, we had to find a different way to get those logs out. The way we chose to do that is using chains. So we've got two different types of chain that we use. This first one is called a choker chain. And at one end, it has a sort of a curved piece of metal that you can poke underneath a log and it'll kind of curl up on the other side and use that to pull the chain through underneath. Then at the other end, it has this big red hook. And what this does is it allows it to slip over itself and then locks inside, creating this, this loop that tightens as you then pull on it. Now we can directly attach this chain to some of the hooks on the bucket on the tractor. So we can just loop one of these chain links through the, uh, the hook on the bucket. But this chain is only maybe I don't know, eight feet long or something. So it doesn't give us a ton of maneuverability and, and length. So instead, what we've got is a couple of these chains. Now these are just long kind of uh, regular chains. Uh, I think they're three eighths. And what these can do is these will hook onto this other chain. So we can hook it onto the end like that. And then that gives us another 20 foot of extension. And if that's not enough, We've got a second one as well, which gives us 40 feet. And that was really useful when we were dealing with the septic system or the septic leach field. We were able to have a, a tree that we felled on the far side where we really couldn't drive to. We could put the choker chain around it, a couple of these longer chains, these 20 foot chains, and that gave us over 40 feet that we could then stretch out and pull those logs out. And it's not just logs as well, it's actually complete trees sometimes that we're using this for. So we are able to, to wrap this around a tree that maybe isn't as near to the chipper as we wanted it to be, drag it closer to where we wanted to chip it. And that way we weren't doing lots of back and forth trips on foot, bringing branches over, we could actually bring the tree to the chipper. I really hope you've enjoyed this video, learning about all the tools we are using to clear land in our forest. If you have, then make sure you're subscribed and follow us along on our journey as we build our dream home here in Vermont.